August is National Make-A-Will Month. And even if that sounds a little strange, it's a good time to make sure that your loved ones, your own legacy, and your peace of mind are protected. Financial professional George Villa is here to get us started on will making or estate planning. And most, most people don't want to go there. We already know that the majority of people procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate. And talking about end of life is a, almost a taboo topic. And, Less than 70% of people even have the documents in place necessary. So what happens is, is then we leave a mess. So if you it don't, is a mess. It I is. mean, it really is. It for, is. And I know we're talking to folks now who've been through it. Right. And they know it's a mess because if you don't have a plan, then the state decides for you. Right. So when was the last time the government had the best plan for you? Well, well, right. I and mean, it doesn't why, work and, that way. And you shouldn't count on right. that. You should have it. You should have what you want to have, go to who you want to go to, how you want to be treated, already put in a plan, and everybody in the household should know that. Okay. So a will is simply a document that says what you want to have happen. A trust is a document that gives you the ability to control once you're deceased. The trust doesn't come to life until you have a death date, it has a birth date. So we're going to start with the will, right. which is the cornerstone, the cornerstone. of your, your estate plan. It, so that's the, the it's foundation. It's simply what do you want to have happen. And, and oftentimes if, if it's a married mom, dad, 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 and then who gets it next. The problem is, is that it was done when the kids, if you did it, it was when the kids were in Buster Brown. Those are old shoes. But if it was a long time ago. So those things need to be updated. So really, updates need to be placed in. Yes. But now we have more documents that are even more important than that. So you have that as your cornerstone. But now you have to have a power of attorney for health care. And a power of attorney for health care is what you are, are you're, you're giving someone the ability, if you're unable, unwilling, or incapable of taking care of making decisions for yourself. Mm -hmm. it, and it only comes into play if you're unwilling, incapable, or unable. Is, um a, a spouse automatically power of attorney for the no. spouse. Spouse, the spouse. You designate who you want. It doesn't have to be a family member. Right. So, and you need to have a conversation with whoever that person is. Well, yes. And, and so that's that's what you want to have happen. But to go along with that is what's called a living will. And a living will or advanced patient directive is what says, I want to be medicated even in case of my demise. Or how I actually want to be taken care of at the end of life. And that is your contract that, that the power of attorney for your health care advanced patient directive actually can put into place. And you can get that document sometimes uh, online at the Secretary of State's office. Or sometimes if, you go, if people go to the hospital, they'll ask you, do you have a living they will? Do, they do ask that in the and, hospital. And yeah. what they're asking for is, how do you, do you want it, are you a DNR? Are you do not resuscitate? You know, do you want to have it so that something happens to you, they're going to work for you or not? So you've mentioned several documents, so let's simplify. You mentioned the will, well, power of attorney for financial and health. Yeah, there's two different ones. They're separate. Right. And the, the living will. So let's just start with, with the, where do you start? Let's say we're talking to folks who have nothing okay. yet. You can go online. You, don't, you can get a lot of the documents online. Um, but the will, the power of attorney for health care is more is imperative. And, and on the living will, we have a, on, our, on villiatax.com, our website, we have some of those documents that you can look up too. And people are wondering if they need to go through an attorney or if they can just go online and get these forms and fill out a will. It is, there are some sites that are good. It's good to have it reviewed, but it needs to be conversation. Something is better than nothing in most things, but definitely the living, uh, the living will. And then the beneficiary forms. Anything that could have a beneficiary, whether it's a 401k, 403b, your IRAs, your bank accounts, it can be TOD, POD, those are designations that says who gets it. Uh, even a house can actually have a beneficiary. And when they have a beneficiary, that helps avoid probate, helps avoid uh, fights. Because okay. it goes contractually to whoever's on that. So, for example, I just was talking to a friend today whose dad has a car collection. He has a right. lot of, of, of great, antique, right. classic, right. expensive cars. Right. Well, if you don't designate who those go to, it's that's a, a lot of money that's going to be a fight in the family. People fight over a spoon, Paula. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's so true, isn't it? it is. So you really need to get that. Right. And, and ASAP. Yes. Yeah. And, and yeah. one advice I will give people that travel is have a copy of your living will and your past patient drug, a copy in your normal suitcase oh. and things. Because something happens, you go someplace and something goofy happens. No one can make any changes and help you until it's taken care of. Happy um, National Make-A-Will Month. Sorry. I know. <laughs> That's good, though, George. Good information. Thank you, you so much.